Hey, thanks so much for downloading the episode today. On the show, we talk about how boring the Super Bowl was. We also want to know what the hell is going on with Pete Davidson. Why is he attracting all the hot women of Hollywood? This, plus some ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. Nothing wrong with a boy toy. I mean, why not? Paula. How do I harness this and like make it go away? Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth. This is episode 343. Oh, we are sisters who podcast. Sorry. <laughs> We're never going to get it. I'm completely we distracted don't... by all the cord- cold sores on my lip. So You have the herb? I have herpes right now. Yeah. Oh, no. Gong hey, fat choy. Either that or I played a trumpet that someone shoved up their butt. So Did you did play you ever... Rusty Trumpet? Did you ever see American <laughs> Pie 2? I'm sure I've seen most of it. Is did, doesn't Stifler's mom finally get some from the kid? No, it was the redheaded girl, Allison Hannigan and uh, oh, Jason yes, Biggs. They get, she's yes. like, okay, I just want to try something. And then all of a sudden it's like, Burr! and he's like, whoa. <laughs> and she stuck the trumpet piece up his butt. <laughs> oh, my God. And so then they leave the room. It was like the band room. Yes. The, the teacher comes in and he starts playing the trumpet. <gasps> and then the next day he's got all these blisters all over his lips. <laughs> No. So that's how I feel that's right awful. now. I don't know Gross. why I have so many. Well, that's I, what I was going to ask you. Did you play the rusty trumpet or no, something? No, I think it's because, remember I was sick for like a couple days? Yes. I think I must have had like a virus or something because I didn't really get a cold. I just yeah. was like kind of stuffy and... You do realize like that crap. you're going to get a, you're going to get a dream interview. Oh yeah, tomorrow. and I'm going to walk up there and my giant big <laughs> lip is going to... You know, they're going to be like, we we love you completely. We want to give you all this money. And all you have to do is show up looking perfect. And you're going to show up with a fat lip. My giant bottom <laughs> lip's going to be covered in lipstick. Or it'll be one of those things where it'll be next week and you'll be like, I have this giant scab on my lip. Oh, God, Please that's just the it. worst. <laughs> that's the worst. God. No, I tried to tell you Gong Hey Fat Choi. Who's that? It is. It is. Cantonese for Happy Chinese New Year. Oh, Today okay. is the first day of Chinese New Year. It is now officially the year of the pig. <laughs> so, I and what's funny is so that words, in, but... in in the United States, if we said that we are come, you know, we would think of all of these people. <laughs> exactly. That would be perfect. But in you know in the East Asian cultures, it's actually a good thing. And I was curious. I don't necessarily believe in horoscopes or anything. Uh, No, I mean, they're fun to read, but if you... They're fun to read. If you read yours, you know, it always Mm -hmm. seems applicable. If you read them all, they're all applicable. Okay, well, you are the year of the horse. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. Okay, so I'm going to read what yours is because it's a good one. Okay. So, the year of the pig is going to bring blessings to the horse in career, finance, and relationships. Oh, God. Please, please let that be the case. (laughs) This year will be a time of expansion, growth, and forward momentum, especially in work and business. Opportunities that present themselves will be rewarding financially as well as boosting reputation. This will naturally lead to more business and financial opportunities as well as opportunities to network. I just want one opportunity. (laughs) I don't care if there's multiple. Yeah, you only need one. However, it takes money to make money will definitely apply. This will find themselves expending financial resources to support career expansion. In terms of romance, horses can expect to ride through the year with t- without too many relationship bumps. This is a good year for both single and paired horses. Overall, relationships will be blessed with harmony and support for each other. However, there may be a few glitches and rough patches that will mm-hmm. have to be navigated. Okay. This can be a good health year for horses as they change up some of their negative habits for better routines. So I got to figure out what my negative habits are. I would say your current living situation <laughs> is a negative habit. Would be a negative habit. <laughs> so Jesus. I should look for fellow horses. Horses, uh, you know horses, what? Horses, Actually, horses. your perfect match based on your Chinese zodiac sign is here. Mine is fine. Mine, you know what? Mine's the least of the positives. Daryl's is pretty good too, but 
Mine's, you know, at least it says I'm going to be healthy, but, you know, whatever. What are you? I'm a dog. Oh, okay. Well, at least you're not the cock. Nobody wants to be that one. Daryl is. He's a cock. <laughs> Does he say he's yes. the chicken or the rooster? I said, I go, oh, you're the, you're the rooster. He goes, I prefer cock. I'm like, of course you do. <laughs> Jesus. Of course he does. Okay, so the three symbols that work well together is tiger, horse, and dog. Tiger, horse, and dog. Yes, we're talented communicators with strong senses of honor, the tendency to act impulsively, an idealistic perspective, and the desire for a long-lasting bond. Hey, that's us. That is us. That is us. Okay, so anyway. (laughs) You're the dog, right? Yes, I am the dog. I am the dog. (laughs) That's from When Harry Met Sally. Who's the dog here? Are you trying to say one of us is a dog in this scenario? (laughs) Yes. Who's the dog? You are the dog. I am the dog. I am the dog. (laughs) I love that fucking movie. And I hate you, Harry. I really really hate hate you. you. (laughs) Billy Crystal is really quite unattractive. I know. I know. She was gorgeous in that movie. I really struggled with the the choice of Billy Crystal, but it helped them to remain platonic for so long. Right. Because she wasn't necessarily, you know, because all the people that she dated in that movie were very good looking. They were tall and cute, like super handsome. And he's this little schlub, this tiny little man. And yet he's hilarious and brilliant. It's just like we were talking last week. That's the dude I'd fall in love with. Probably. It wouldn't be the tall guy, you know, but anyway... And by the way, I think Daryl is cute, by the way. <laughs> I don't think he's, like, ugly. I will say he's improved with age. Yes. The first time I met him, I was a little taken back. Well, I, I will tell you what most people said when I went public with our relationship, because <laughs> I did it. It did take you a while. <laughs> it wasn't because I was embarrassed. It was because... <laughs> <laughs> it it wasn't that. It was because I I was not a fan of telling anybody I was dating anyone. Right. In our family, that is like, you better be sure. Because yeah, we don't really then talk it's like, about those well, things. when are they coming to the house? Oh, well, when God. are we going to see them? I mean, it like when a we're thing. about to get married, <laughs> like that's when they're coming to the house. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, oh, you're going to have to meet my dad and my or my stepdad and my mom. And that's going to be a whole other thing, you know, and yeah. it's just so it's one of those things where I didn't want to say anything to anyone. But once I was like, all right, fine, I guess we're going to go public. Then I got this a lot from our family, literally everyone. Well, he's not like someone you would normally date. <laughs> he's different. <laughs> And I'm like, right. what is that supposed to mean? They're like, well, he's just not what you, you know, you tend to like men who are a bit bigger and yeah, you know, and I said, yeah, I know, but I didn't want to get into the specifics, but I'm like, well, look, if you saw his dick, you would understand. That's all <laughs> I could tell you. Like, I literally can't explain it any other way. Okay. So trust me, we're all pleasantly surprised. All right. You're just That's like, all. I like him. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything else, and I'm moving them in immediately. <laughs> so, happy Chinese New Year to those who are celebrating. Um, I, of course, now want f- Chinese food. Mm. Anyway, okay, so although it's been talked to death, Daryl and I, we did not go to any parties or anything. I don't like going to Super Bowl parties, personally. Did you? Actually, Olivia went to a Super Bowl party up the street. <laughs> Of all things, she went to her friend's house. I don't know if they actually watched it. She came back on. She had eyeshadow and mascara on. So I'm thinking they just played dress up and makeup. That's what it sounds like. Uh, Well, we we started watching it and then it was like three to three forever. Mm -hmm. And I was laying on the couch and then I wound up falling asleep between the second quarter all the way up until like the beginning of the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So I completely missed everything. And I think it was still three to three when I woke up. It was funny. I read something and it said, how would you have liked to have paid $4,000 for a one touchdown, two field goals and Maroon 5? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I was surprised. I'm like, this is like the lowest scoring game ever. And I was kind of surprised because I personally thought the Patriots were going to cream them. Yeah. They didn't for whatever no. reason. But of course, in the very end, like they always do, the Patriots, you know, finally scored pull, a touchdown. pulled it out and, you know, ended it. And so 
I would have loved to have seen some kind of upset with the Rams uh, coming forward, but uh, Jared Goff was terrified, and that was not happening. He was not going to perform well, and he didn't, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I don't blame them. I mean, the Patriots He's, have been to the Super Bowl. This this was their sixth time. Not only that, but Jared Goff is like 23 years old. He's yeah. He's a baby. He's like a fetus. Well, I mean, and they every time they panned to the coach, the coach had the same look on his face every single time. It was just like sheer terror. He was like white as a ghost. And he had these big dish, dish eyes, these big saucer shaped eyes just staring out into the oblivion of this ridiculousness and it's like well we're here i'm i can't believe it he it said you know youngest coach to be in the super bowl he's 33 and i'm like i was trying to lose baby weight when i was 33 i don't know how this fucker got this job that's crazy yeah really i mean and he looks like he's you know all of like five foot four and it it was it would have been really really amazing to see the rams come and beat this veteran team it's like playing your dad Right. You know, <laughs> it's like Tom Brady could literally Jared Goff could be his son. That's the age mm-hmm. difference. I mean, it's insane. So anyway, it was boring. I didn't like hardly any of the commercials, which I usually look forward to. They and didn't seem outrageous. I mean, no, the ones that I saw. I didn't so. like I did, There was the only one that I liked was the NFL 100. I thought that one was really funny because it had Marshawn Lynch in it. And then um, the Game of Thrones Bud Light one was really good. I don't know if you saw that. Those no, two were I really missed that good. One. Yeah, they I kind of killed... liked the first one we saw with the elevator with Jason Bateman. I thought that one was kind of funny. I did not see that one. I, I really didn't. I didn't have a ton of interest in watching it this season. Um, I don't know why. I just really wasn't into it. Glad I saw Gladys Knight sing the Star Spangled Banner. Me too. She did amazing. She find she just stuck to it. You know, she didn't She's do anything. So... She didn't do anything fancy. No she, oohs no. and ahs. She and, you looked... know. Oh! First of all, you know. she, she looked fabulous. Yes. And she looked like royalty. And and I'm like, man, uh, how old is she? Oh, God. I don't know. Her legs Two, look awesome. 200 years old. She looked amazing. I was so, for 200 years old. She looked fabulous. But anyway, I just thought she was great. And other than that, I just want to say Julian Edelman, who won MVP for being a badass uh congratulations but if you were a baseball player you would not be playing in this game because the steroid restrictions are much different <laughs> so your ass may be in the hall of fame but barry bonds and the like will not be so fuck you guys all of you all of you <laughs> freaking people it just pisses me off it's like i see so it's okay for them but it isn't okay for them it's just like ugh, whatever just different standards yeah Okay, so Super Bored, Super Bowl, done and done. All right, let's move on quickly to the celebs, because I know that you have a bee in your bonnet about Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Okay, so before you go on and on about why you hate it, and I agree with you, believe it or not, I agree with you, but I also agree that they are doing this to get votes. They want votes for the Oscars, because... Oscars, the final voting for the for for voting for if you're one of the voting committee, voting opens February 12th and closes February 19th. So that's why we're seeing all this pathetic, pathetic display from Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga is they are trying desperately to garner some votes for I assume her because he didn't well, get nominated for him. shit. Oh, what did he get nominated for? Best actor? Probably best actor and best director he did not get director oh he did not get no director. he did not which was kind of a snub so i think he would have preferred that over actor absolutely i know that you and i are on the same page about the whole vegas performance oh god i Do seriously tell. thought she was going to give him a blowjob while he was singing i mean she was she was sitting either on the floor or her piano bench And then she had, she was on her elbows, like on his legs and she had like her hands clapped together and she was just Mm. staring up at him while he was singing. And I'm just thinking to myself and and I just, I put myself in my own shoes and I think like looking at that picture, if that was my man singing and there was another woman doing that to him, famous (laughs) or not, I would kick her ass and be like, don't go near him again unless you guys have to sing and if you have to sing you will be on the other side of the stage 
It was a little out there. And what was funny is that... It's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable because everybody knows that they're both... Well, they're supposedly... Well, he's for sure is with a, a woman and they have a child together. And so... And I know she's engaged, right? She's engaged to some nobody. This She's been engaged a couple of times. Twice, so yeah. Yes. So I saw that and I went, okay... I get that they're doing this for PR, but there's not one person in the audience that's going to be casting votes for Oscars. So this was supposed to go viral, which it obviously did. And all the comments that I read were like, oh, my God, I love them so much and la, la, la. And I'm like, really? That's what you're seeing? Well, see, and that's the thing I don't understand is I've read a lot of comments, too. And they're like, I think they'd make a great couple and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, are you guys delusional? Yes. Yes. Because I'm looking at it going, are you fucking kidding? What? This is the most pathetic display I have ever seen to try to garner a vote for a fucking award that means nothing in the big picture. Like, for real. And it's so disrespectful. I mean, that's my whole thing is it's like it's so disrespectful to their partners, the way they're always like pawing over each other and hugging and the way she just looks at him with her starry eyes. And I I still I will believe this until I die. (laughs) I still think they fucked at some point. Yeah. Or they were fucking during this shoot or whatever. I agree. I completely agree. I mean, we've been around long enough, Paula. We know. Exactly. She can't get past it. She's a stage five clinger, man. I mean, she totally is. And he's just like, how do I harness this and like make it go away? You know, and you know, the night of the Golden Globes, (laughs) he brought his mother. Yes. And the reason why he brought his mother is because his baby, his mama and the baby were off in Russia doing a modeling shoot. And I'm like, who does a modeling shoot on a (laughs) Sunday night? (laughs) Well, isn't it Monday there? I don't know what it was, but she's probably like, fuck you. I'm not going to watch this again. You know, I'm taking the baby and we're getting the hell out of here. Interesting. The Oscar luncheon, it's the it's a tradition. All the Oscar nominees attend this big luncheon where the the board, the Academy makes some announcements and they basically are saying congratulations on your nomination. So they were obviously there. Mm -hmm. And I am not kidding you, Paula. Never were they alone. And there was always somebody in between them all the time. Oh, so they're getting bad press now. Well, I don't know if they're getting bad press, but they're getting bad. Someone's getting bad press at home is my guess. The the only time I saw them standing next to each other without someone between them, there was somebody in their discussion with them. They were never alone. No. Interesting. So it is possible that they overdid it for personal, you know, the personal lives taste. I know right. I would not be happy about it. And I think it was, I mean, especially, listen, we, we, we do not have anything to do with him. We know nothing, but we mm. know the look of fucking. And oh, those, yeah. those two absolutely had. I mean, it doesn't not- matter what they, they can lie till they die, but women know. No, women know. no pun intended, but she has no poker face. <laughs> <laughs> she does not. I, I mean it. <laughs> Speaking of what has Pete Davidson done to the women of Hollywood? I don't think it's what he's done. I think it's what he has. You really think he has a big dick and that's why he's getting all these girls? I do. Well, I think it's that plus the comedian factor. He's funny and charming. He's funny, charming, and has a huge penis. He must because he has to close the deal first to get to the penis. And Mm -hmm. let's be real, Paula, he looks like a sick child. (laughs) He does. He has bad hair because he's constantly doing something to it. He's got baggy eyes and big bug eyes. And he just always looks like he needs a shower. He's just pale and his eyes are, he looks stoned all the time. I will say, I mean, he's really tall, which is, is, yes, he's tall. So that is attractive to women, you know, a tall guys. And he might not be as spindly as he looks in photos. I mean, maybe he's like broad chested or something. He looks like a little boy to me. He I is just... a little boy. He's like 25. That's he's a not kid. That little. I mean, my son is older than him. I, I know. But what I'm saying is, is, you know, in real time, 25 is, you know, that's like the age where you need to start being responsible and (laughs) i don't know i just can't believe it i'm like kate beckinsdale is she is gorgeous stunningly gorgeous and i mean hasn't she 
dated some really good looking people, like really successful, attractive people? Or does she have bad taste? So I don't know. I mean, are they truly dating or I guess I don't they know. are because I mean, yeah. like they're holding hands and stuff. So. Well, and the second you go public when there's paparazzi, you know what you're doing. It's all, you know the thing so so i don't know if she's just going through like a midlife crisis or if she's just mm-hmm. enjoying the ride or well listen if he I mean, if no he's pun intended <laughs> if he's funny and charming and she has some time to play nothing wrong with a boy toy i mean why not I don't think it's going to be anything serious but no of course not but i mean remember when jlo dated casper <laughs> They dated for years. Off and on, yes. But he was very young. And, you know, she didn't care. She was just like, yes, so this is what I'm doing now. And now she's with somebody incredibly different. Yes, that is true. Yeah. So anyway, best of luck to you, Kate, and your sad little person that you're dating. I thought I heard there was some sort of desperate housewife or real housewife trying to get in on the action, too. What? No, I did not read that. That's stupid. I hate that those people are famous for anything. God, they're just gross. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so, so speaking of. OK, so I don't want to end on a sad note, but Christoph St. John, who I actually remember, I never I did not watch soap operas. But after a while, when someone's been on a soap opera for 20 years, you kind of just know who they are. Mm-hmm. And Christoph St. John was on Young and the Restless. Mm-hmm. And he killed himself. I We're assuming at this point he committed suicide over the weekend. Well, they're not positive, but well, they don't they have to send off toxicology stuff I know. because there's no there's no official ruling. There's nothing that leads them to bleed to foul play. But there's also nothing outstanding that shows it was a suicide. Yeah, he was 52, I think. Something like that. And well, I think the reason that people are equating is that just like you and me or any parent who Mm -hmm. loses a child, he has been a mess since his son killed himself. Yes. You know, it could have been an accidental overdose or something like that. Well, anything, anything to heal the pain or what they think is healing the pain. Right. And I did like what our sister said when she says you can die from a broken heart and it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean you just like die. You you get yourself to a point where what's the point in, in living anymore if my child is gone? And I mean, mm-hmm. you and I both are, I mean, my God, it's yeah. the idea. I, I can see it happening. And it just really made me sad. And I thought, God, see what happens when suicide, when mental illness gets to a point, it it infects everybody, not just the mm-hmm. person. And that's what makes it so painful. So if you yeah. are suicidal, by all means, please call 911, call a friend, go to NAMI nami.org it's all there they can help you and you can be anonymous initially too there's a lot of options now where you don't have to call and say hi my name is jamie and you know you can actually just get the help you need before you have to you know throw yourself into treatment right so hopefully so sad it is sad i i'm really sad for him and his and the wife his is the mother of the son too as well yeah that's the whole be... meal deal. Well, because she has two losses now, even I though they know. were divorced. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, speaking of parenting, really quick before we move into some really funny, ugly and awkward moments from boys. I wanted to talk about, do you remember the first time you left your children at daycare? I do. Okay. And it's different for each child. For me, I was very fortunate in that most, the first parts of my a working career as a single mom I had family who got to watch my the children Mm -hmm. so I I was very fortunate but when I actually had to take them to a legit daycare center I cried I literally Mm -hmm. cried and it reminds me of when mom dropped you off at the daycare center every day and you would stand at the window and cry (laughs) Oh, God. <laughs> you would literally stand there. I remember vividly. And you'd been going to this daycare center for years, for not years, but for a long time. Right. And, you know, mom is a lot like you. Or you're a lot like mom, I should say. I don't want to go. Okay, you don't have to go today. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, no, just like so weak <laughs> would not be like, yeah, that's fine. You can just stay home. You were in your purple overalls and you had your little Dorothy Hamill haircut and you were standing with your little white turtleneck. And you were standing at the screen door and they had it open because it was spring. And you're standing there with your mouth open crying. 
And we're driving away. We're all, bye, Paula. Bye. And you're all, <laughs> And mom started crying. Aww. And I'm like, mom, you drop her off every day. She goes, well, you, just you wait. Just you wait. And it's true. It is so true. Mm-hmm. How was no, it, it for is you? true. How was well, it when I when I dropped off with Ryan, I didn't have like family or anything like that to watch him. And right. so I had to take him to a daycare by our house. And so he was about, I want to say eight weeks old when I mm. dropped him off. He was really little. Yeah. And so I dropped him off. I did cry all the way to work mm. and I was starting a brand new job. Of course. You know, but I called probably five times that day just to see how he was doing and Aww. all that stuff. And he was fine. I mean, they took really good care of him. They always gave me little papers every day that, you know, they were called my day forms. Oh, and so they, they said you. how many times they changed his diapers, how many bottles he had, how, you know, well, how, what time of day he took naps and how long were the naps. And That's so cute, you know, all these little things. And then they would also, you know, say like, Ryan had a fun time playing with squishy blocks today or something <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah, something like that. So it, it always made me feel a lot better. But but, you know, it always you always do feel kind of bad leaving them, especially if they're having like a rough morning. But, you know, like if they if you had to drop them off when they needed a bottle or something. Oh, like that, I know. Or, oh, yeah. And they're already crying. And then you're like, I have to go because I'm going to be late. You know, I <laughs> can't get fired. What about Olivia? So with, <laughs> with Olivia, she was um, a little older. Like, I want to say she was like three months old when I dropped her off. Yeah. So she was like 12 weeks because I was still nursing, I would actually go at lunchtime and I would go and nurse her at lunchtime, even oh, though she nice. had bottles and stuff. So I got to spend a little time with her. That's so great. So I got to see her for, I want to say at least like two months, you know, not a super long time, but I, I don't. So I, I didn't feel like I was missing her as much. Yeah, I think for me, the Tyler was the hardest because he was my first. Yeah. And then um, Mackenzie... I was fortunate enough that she got to stay home until she was a little bit older, like Olivia. So when mm-hmm. she went, it wasn't that bad because she was ready to learn things. Right. And then Malia, too. Malia, too. But Tyler was rough. It was rough. I hated leaving him at daycare. I just wanted to take him with me and put him in my pocket. I know. It's really hard. But anyway, hard. You, you do what you got to do. Especially when they're so small, too. That's yeah. the hardest part. Oh, my gosh. I know. Leaving them when they're tiny, when they're in diapers, it's it's brutal. But, like you know. When they can't even hold their neck up or anything like that. You're just like. <laughs> You're like, this is unnatural. It just doesn't seem right. It's so. not. It isn't. It, but you know what? Times have changed a lot. You know, telecommuting is a big thing now, luckily. So if you're lucky enough to do that. but Well, and. Leave of absences are a lot longer now. And they are. So, they are. It's true. It's and true. And they do paid leave now for, you know, longer absences. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's just different. You don't have to go right back after, you know, you're basically sewed up. And it's like on, on one hand, it's like I'm so glad that there's been a bit more understanding about parents taking more time off to raise their children before they go back into the working world but on mm-hmm. the other hand i'm really resentful because when we were there it was like raw dog man it's like okay 12 weeks got to see your face now or we're firing you like 12 it's 12 re- weeks yeah i mean you could you were paid for six weeks and then the yeah. 12 weeks if you had like paid time off saved up you could save that vacation. otherwise it was unpaid yeah it was like uh you better come back and answer these phones or you know, you better find somewhere else to make minimum wage. <laughs> Basically. Just, and so it was rough. It was, it's awful. Yeah, it is. So, it's true. Very different. I now know. They, that's what I'm struggling with now. I mean, God forbid I took time off to. I know, to raise your children. Make sure my daughter who, you know, needed glasses and had to, you know, uh, repeat a grade and has yeah. ADHD. <laughs> I had to deal with that and now I'm but, trying to find a job and everyone's just like well you've been out of work a really long time and I'm like oh I'm sorry I had to take <laughs> care of my family and you know everyone fucking preaches you know work life balance but I don't think they really mean it I agree it just makes me agree. oh we need work life balance in the sense like if you have to leave work because your kid's sick um you know we'll yeah. let you take the two hours off but yeah, we didn't mean like for a year we don't mean like real work like or real life <laughs> What do parents do when they leave their job to care for a, 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 a critically ill par- a kid? 
Yeah, what if your child is like handicapped or something? Yeah. Can and then what? It's like, oh, yes, you can say that. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yes, you can. There was a lot of inclusive uh, commercials this year on the Super Bowl. I don't know if you noticed that. No, I didn't. There like was what? one. Well, I didn't. Xbox did a commercial because they have, and I, this is a good thing. I'm not making fun of it. The, uh, they have created uh, controllers for uh, adaptive controllers. So for kids who maybe are uh, not able to have the dexterity that it takes to work an Xbox controller. I don't even have the dexterity to use an Xbox controller, to be completely honest with you. But yeah. they're like pads versus the controller. So you can like hit them instead. Oh, yeah. It kind of reminds yeah. me of that commercial where that little kid is. That's like, what it. Yes, that's that is exactly what it is. It's the I adaptive love that commercial. One. Me too. Well, I liked it the first time. The 10th time I was like, all right, enough. He did it. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> They just saturated the networks with it. But this this Super Bowl commercial, they have several kids using the adaptive uh, controllers. And I thought it was great. And then, um, of course, my family says I'm evil and terrible. And and if we believed in it, I would be going to hell. But um, there was a girl who had like this. Her arm was normal. And then it kind of withered down into like a little like a tentacle or something. <laughs> Okay, and she was slapping the adaptive controller with the the whatever it was, and I said, "Why are they showing it? Why are they showing it like that? It's like I'm not even looking at the controller anymore. Now I'm just looking at this." And I said, "And why wouldn't they shave that so she can have a prosthetic? Like, it's like this tentacle, and it's like I don't, I wouldn't want my daughter walking around like that. Well, maybe she's not a good candidate for a prosthetic. I Paula." I mean, look at the commercial. You're you're gonna find the commercial and be like, yeah, you know what? That's a little, that's a little unusual. She like waved it around and slapped. I don't know. I just didn't think that was necessary. <laughs> Every time I see the St. Jude commercials, I always tell myself it's just nineteen dollars a month. I could do that. <laughs> I don't yeah. even need the teddy bear blanket. I just want to do it. Paula, I know. I know. I'm, I feel I'm, bad for the kids that have like no arms or. I know. I don't know. It's I do. sad. But I love that they don't charge them for anything. I like I don't. Oh, even, yeah. I can't even fathom how that is possible. Well, donations. And I think that, uh, for example, when I worked, uh, I worked for an agency that represented Wendy's, the mm-hmm. fast food chain. Um, they are a humongous, uh, humongous partner with St. Jude. Really? Because, yes, because the owner, uh, uh, Dave, you know, Dave of mm-hmm. Wendy's, Dave, he, Thomas, yeah. Dave Thomas, he uh, had a, a child, uh, I believe, or a, a sibling who benefited from St. Jude. And so that is their number one thing is so th- when they do like the uh, well, they do adoption, but they also do St. Jude. And it's usually like uh, the, they do golf. Tur- they used to golf tournaments special promotions all benefit St. Jude. All of it. Mm, so, I mean, good. yeah, so I think there are corporate sponsors that probably funnel funding for them so that children can go in and not worry about, you know, and isn't it sad that we need that? You know, I mean, wouldn't it be great if just everybody had, oh, oh I'm getting political, never mind. All right, so, Hugly and Awkward Moments of the Week, Sports Edition. Oh, Okay. <laughs> We have two. These are boys. Okay, so here's the first one. This is from Jerry. Okay. I was never a good football player, but was fast enough to be a starting safety and second string tailback on JV. Second to last game of the year, we were playing a team that had beaten us earlier in the season, and our varsity was off that week, so our coach had the varsity starting tailback play in JV games. (laughs) That's funny. He wants to win really bad. Okay, so he ran for something like 350 yards, six touchdowns in the game, and now he's like literally unable to breathe. He's been playing so hard because he's running circles around everybody. But we still needed a two-point conversion to even get into overtime. So the coach calls for the JV starter to fill in for the two-point conversion, but he can't find his helmet. Oh, God. So, of course, I get to go in. Oh, no. 
I've carried the ball about 10 times the entire season, but for some reason, our coach decides I'm getting the ball in this do or die situation. I get the ball and meet a linebacker at about the one yard line. He's pushing me, <laughs> I'm pushing him. And in the course of twisting around, he's slipping off, but grabs a hold of my pants, which of course now have come down as I lunge forward toward the end zone. Jock came too. <gasps> he was naked? So I'm hopping off the ground, all excited about my game-tying moment of glory, naked from the waist to the ankles. And I mean, I am so excited. I don't care. He knows he's naked. And decide to spike the ball emphatically. In the grandest of all sports bloopers, it bounces right back up and drills me in the crotch. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> glory over pain immediate nakedness continuing but I at least he got the points <laughs> i didn't even get to see over time as i was doubled over on the sideline being examined for testicular damage by the school <laughs> trainer <laughs> i can't man i bet this happened a long time ago where there's no video because that is something that i would love to see someone had to have been filming that one would think <laughs> That sounds like something that would happen to an awkward person. Good for him, though. Yeah. I mean, for getting the points. Exactly. S sorry that your t testicles are now purple. Obviously, nobody was going to hoist him up on their shoulders and, you know, <laughs> run around Apparently. the field. They're like, dude, you're naked. <laughs> no, that's not happening. Who wants to do that? I'm not doing it. Are you? No, do let's it? just. No. Well, he was probably carted off the field. <laughs> Did they at least let him pull up his pants before they... I would hope so, but I mean, my God. Not put him on a stretcher and, like, you know, cover him with a <laughs> towel little, or something. little dingling hanging out. <laughs> Where's his mother? He's like, get him covered! My God! I always thought that would have been my biggest problem if Ryan played sports. I could never just trust that they were going to take care of him. I knew I would run out there with my purse. <sighs> well... And just, <laughs> you know... What's going on? I will... Uh, listen, I've been to enough high school football games in my life the mothers absolutely run out there they um do not fuck around and you, there's a really strong rule that you're not allowed to do that right but there are mothers like us out there and they say fuck your rules that's my baby and they run out there with you know and they're like where's an ambulance i mean like they <laughs> they're not messing around do you think i'm gonna trust a bunch of men to no! to take care of my child that's are right are you joking me it's like, he's giving you everything. <laughs> Don't tell him to walk it off. Yeah, I know. I know that's what I would do. I. It's hard. I, I've seen the moms, though. They'll pace up and down the sidelines when their child is injured. Eventually, the coach will call them over if they think it's going to be like, you have to take them to the emergency room or something. But for the most part, they really don't want you to do that. <laughs> But well, yeah. of course they don't. But I no. mean, that's not their call. It I isn't. Mean, technically it is, but you yeah, know. I understand. OK, here's number two. This is from Craig. It was my senior year of high school. Our baseball team needed one more win to make the state tournament. And we were playing a team that also needed a win to make the states. Oh. The, the game was tied in the fifth or the sixth inning when I stepped to the plate with one out and a runner on third. My hey, coach that's good. I know. My coach decided to squeeze the runner and wanted me to lay a bunt down the first base line. The pitcher delivers, the runner takes off, I square to get the bunt, and the pitch comes straight to my head. Because I was positioned to bunt, avoiding the pitch was awkward. I ducked my head hard and managed to knee myself squarely in the face. <laughs> I knocked myself out and <laughs> And broke my nose. Oh, no. I came to a moment later. I came to a moment later because uh, he was covered in blood. Plus, I collapsed right next to the plate. So the runner couldn't even attempt to slide in. He was tagged out. He should have just let the ball hit him in the head so he could have run to first. Right? And they would have won. Yeah. My teammates were dying laughing as the ump and our coach guided me back to the dugout. I didn't even get to finish the at-bat, and the trainer wouldn't let me back in the game. We lost the game and missed the state tournament when my replacement in center field misplayed a pop-up as I watched from the bench. Oh, so the third out was the pop-up. Yes. Dang it. <sighs> well, wah, dang. Dang. Awkward. <laughs> Who knocks themselves out on a bunt? An awkward <laughs> moment person. <laughs> God, he probably never lived that down. Never. Clearly. That is a hugly and awkward Still moment for the time. Still talking about it to this day. <laughs> to this day. 
I'm sorry that you did that. I'm sorry that your whole team hates you now whenever they think about that day. <laughs> we could have gone to state, but I could have been a state champion. You know what that could have been? I could have I could have been state champion. I could have gone to college. I could be in the pros right now if it hadn't been for Craig. Yeah, but state champion <laughs> at what age? Seven? No, he you was know? a senior. He was a senior in high school. Oh, he was a senior in high school? Yeah. Oh, Which wow. is that even worse. That would have been a really big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Losing, missing out on states in your senior year is like a kick in the gut. Yikes. I can't even imagine. So anyway. Well, I think that's, a, that's it for this week. Yes. Friends, please visit UglyTruth.com and click on the Amazon button. I know you need to buy Valentine's Day gifts for your loved ones. They um, actually have a really cute Valentine's shop right now. Oh. If you go to if you go through our Ugly Truth page and you hit the link and go to Amazon, they actually have a, a, a page where it's Valentine's Day shop and they have it, you know, his, hers, kids, all the categories you could possibly consider for your dog or whatever. Anything. For heaven's sakes. Well please, Paula, it's the worst holiday of the world. We all know it. I know. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. What? Um, you're going to you're going to do anything? No. Well, we usually get the kids Valentine's. Well, that's different. I get the kids Valentine's too. Although I I don't know if I will. Every I do it every year and then I end up with the candy cuz nobody remembers to take it home. Don't you get Daryl a card or something? I do get Daryl a card and I am going to do it again this year. Okay. So, no chocolates though or anything? No. No, we don't. I mean, you know, if I was a different person, he would go crazy. But I'm just, I'm so not. But he knows, he know we know, we have the rules. We know what they are. He's going to send you flowers. I better get fucking flowers. <laughs> he didn't do it last year and it was a nightmare. <laughs> it's like you can't set a precedent of saying I can't help myself. I just like to celebrate Valentine's Day. And, I, and me going, fine, that's fine. And then him going, you know what? You don't really like Valentine's Day. So no, I'm not going to do anything. And then I get him more stuff than he does. And he's like, I'm an asshole. I'm like, yes, you are. God. It's like, just stick with the plan. What a <laughs> tricky holiday. It's a tricky holiday. And that's why. And I told him that I go, this is why I hate it. This is exactly why I hate Valentine's Day. There's no winning. There is no winning. It's like for newly dating couples. Ugh. It's not meant for people who've been together forever. High schoolers. You yeah. know, it's meant for high school. It's meant for, you know, classroom holiday parties where everybody gets a little valentine with a little with a little piece of candy and the teacher gets the big one I forgot you know about that we're gonna have to go buy that crap just go to walmart we will that's but where they I have mean, them that's it, literally it's the best place to get them i mean i'll never go to walmart but you you know that's where you go yeah, we usually pick them out and then we mm-hmm. always have to end up buying two boxes because, you know, yes. they come in a pack of 24, but the classroom has 26. So oh, we have my to buy God. a whole other box just for it's, two. And then you've got all these things and, and all the extra stickers end up on your window or on someone's furniture or something. Or someone, and we're glad to have the extra box because, you know, Olivia wants to do it herself. So she winds up tearing <laughs> five of them. Yeah, and then you mess up. Yes. You know, and then she decides what friend's going to get what. And I'm like, Olivia, just make them all generic because you're just going to stuff them in everyone's shoebox, little paper or bag, paper bag to their desk. And, and make sure, you know, and God forbid, get the good candy. Just just spend the extra 50 cents and get the Starburst, you know, I instead don't know of the generic pinata candy. Last year, someone had pencils. and Oh, God. No, just know. get the freaking get the one that everybody wants. Get the Valentine's Day themed Starburst divvy them out and just be done with it because the moms will do the, all the moms dig through the bag and they go oh look you got one good friend who gave you real candy and then you eat it <laughs> then you eat it then there's the ones where you get like stickers or tattoos or something like that and then yes or yes. just nothing they're there's like look the valentine things. comes with a gift so we don't have to attach anything most of the ones we pick out do Yes. So yes, but I hate all of it. All of it's it. It's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass because it's usually the night before we end up Ugh. doing like sixty Valentines between the two of them. Although well, he's I don't not think Ryan has it. to do it this year. No, middle school they don't do that stuff. Wow, that's awesome. Isn't so it that's, great? That's like thirty less Valentines. Yeah, I have and to then do this year. all that happens is high school comes and there's a Valentine's Day dance, and then that's it. And no yeah, one goes to it. 
So he said he thinks there's a dance coming up, but he doesn't know. And then I asked him if he was going to do like the Valentine's Day, like candy gram. Yeah. He's like, I just don't have anybody. Good. So that's because you play too much Fortnite. Save yourself two dollars. Yeah. It's Anyways. True. Anyway. Okay. So yes, go to Amazon. Also, please visit lipandclip.com for your makeup needs or skincare needs. They are always there and having a variety of sales, so you can get a good deal. Other than that, please uh, be sure to send us your ugly and awkward moments. Um, you can send them to our Facebook page, which is just uh, Ugly Truth, or you can. Where else can they send them? Oh, any of our social media. I mean, okay. we're, on in, we're on Instagram, Ugly Truth. We are on Twitter, Ugly Truth. Facebook, Ugly Truth. And our website, UglyTruth.com. So any kind of uh, ugly and awkward moment. It doesn't have to be any kind of theme. It can just be something funny that happened. We are do- in the Valentine season. So if you had a ugly or ugly and awkward moment, Valentine's related, that'd be funny too. Oh God, I want to hear it so bad. And we're going to find some. We're, we'll find some. We'll, we'll, find we'll read some. those. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, I think that's a wrap, friends. We will see you on Sunday. Have a good rest of your week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.